Welcome to our webinar on multivariate optical computing, where we will be briefly discussing the core technology, some of its key features and specifications, as well as give a brief demonstration of the Benchtop setup. And finally, leave you with an idea of what you can expect to see from us later this year. Again, my name is Adam Fisher. I am team lead at ThorLab SpectralWorks, or TSW, located in Columbia, South Carolina. I am joined today by Ryan Priore, technical manager for TSW, who you've already met. Ryan's been pushing the boundaries of the multivariate optical computing technology for over a decade and will be joining us in the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Multivariate optical computing is an exciting technology, giving us the ability to design an optical filter or set of filters which are encoded to detect specific chemical signatures. These filters, also called multivariate optical elements, can be integrated into a variety of optical configurations, making them great candidates for solving your real-time application-specific chemical sensing needs. In contrast to traditional bandpass filters, which are typically focused on a very narrow region of the spectrum, MOEs are broadband filters which leverage tens or hundreds of wavelengths at the same time. This allows us to maximize the amount of light coming from a sample, which translates into greater sensitivity and specificity. The beauty is we can do all of this in a variety of conditions while maintaining the same accuracy as a laboratory-grade spectrometer. These conditions include working with spectral ranges from UV all the way out to the mid-infrared, in addition to working with a range of phase and optical configurations. Some example configurations could be reflectance with solids, powders, and slurries, or transmission or transflectance configurations with liquids or gases. This technology is also more robust in terms of environmental conditions, when compared to many of the spectrometers on the market. These conditions could include elevated temperatures, vibrations, or high humidity applications. Simply put, if you can use a spectrometer to detect or measure a chemical or component, then chances are an MOE could be developed to make that same measurement with the same accuracy, but in a much simpler and potentially more robust system. I should highlight where MOEs can be most advantageous a few key application principles and what goes into a typical MOE system. We will also try to shed a little light on the process of creating the MOE. Before we jump into the demo though, let's take a look at a couple key application principles for MOEs. Firstly, it's important to remember that the MOE is fundamentally just an optical filter. Additionally, MOE sensors and imagers are built for application-specific purposes. On one end of the metaphorical spectrum of tools, you have equipment like a spectrometer, which offers broadband spectral analysis for more general purpose measurements. Thorlabs makes some great tools in this space already, like the Redstone, which is the newest addition to the OSA family of products. The other end of the spectrum, you have something like a narrow bandpass filter with a detector, which is great for measuring a very specific narrow bandwidth spectrum. In that case, the MOE technology likely would not offer additional benefit over the bandpass if the bandpass is already making the measurement. Where MOE shine is in being smart sensors, for applications where you might find interfering species overlapping one another. The sort of application you would typically see a spectrometer, a hyperspectral imager, or a photometer with multiple filters. So, if an application can be solved with optical spectroscopy, MOE should be on your list of candidates to consider. If you're unsure, reach out to us. We'd be happy to discuss your specific application. Back to the demonstration. In order to showcase the capabilities of an MOE system, we ask ourselves, can we design a system that would allow a user to distinguish between different types of consumer grade oils? Not sure if you're aware, but it's not uncommon for some manufacturers to dilute higher grade oils, like olive oil, with lower quality seed or vegetable oils due to olive oil's high cost to produce. Keeping that in mind, we'd like to demonstrate the ability to detect a particular oil type from the following six consumer grade oils. The user would load up a sample, say flax oil, making sure to replace the cover to reduce any unwanted noise to the system. Now, going to a user interface, when I click measure, our system will cycle through our optical elements to make a prediction based on the oil we've presented to the system. I click measure, we 
can see that our output was correct. Let's consider how a system like this could be designed for other applications of interest. It shouldn't be difficult to see how a system just like the one we have here could be repurposed for applications such as inline process control of chemicals, bioprocessing, or even food and beverage. And remember, we could have just as easily been doing detection of solids on a high-speed conveyor, gases flowing through a pipe, or taking hyperspectral-like images. The light source is one of our compact, stabilized tungsten halogen light sources, which outputs 10 milliwatts of power with a constant intensity. This is then fiber coupled to our fiber optic filter mount, which doubles as a cuvette holder, set up for transmission measurements in this case. That output is then fiber coupled to an off-axis parabolic mirror, which you can see here, collimating our transmission profile onto the filter wheel. This is one of our fast-changing filter wheels which is being controlled by our KQ motor controller. Currently, we're utilizing three of the six measurement channels, an MOE1, an MOE2, and a neutral density filter for this particular application. That collimated filtered light is then focused through an optic onto a Thor Labs extended range TEC cooled and gas detector. This detector allows us to measure from roughly 900 nanometers out to over two and a half microns. Thor Lab's extensive portfolio of quality in-house products gives us a wide range of options when selecting the best components for your system. So, stepping back for a moment, how do we get from a concept to a system like this? Well, it may be helpful to draw some parallels between how one would solve the problem with a traditional spectrometer while pointing out places we differ. At the simplest level, the process may look a little something like this for a traditional spectrometer system. First, determine the desired chemicals or analytes of interest to measure, and maybe just as importantly, any contributing components to our measurement, whether that be other analytes, measurement conditions, etc. Second, collect our spectral data. Third, develop a model to distinguish the analytes of interest. And then fourth, test and update the model with validation sample sets. And lastly, build the system and deploy. Where MOEs primarily differ from a traditional spectrometer is in the model development and deployment phases. Our proprietary process creates a robust, multivariate model from the spectral data. We then design a system around that model, which also dictates how much systematic noise can be tolerated in our final system build. When we arrive at a final model for our instrument, that model is encoded into our MOE instead of being handled by post-processing. In the case of this demo, after defining our desired oils to measure, we started with spectral measurements on all the oils we showed earlier. Before we look at the actual spectrum measure, let's discuss a common challenge encounter when performing spectral measurements of any complex matrix, like the one we have here. Quite often, we are not measuring our pure analyte alone. Instead, we are given a matrix which contains some combination of our analyte of interest as well as interference. In our design process, these interferences are treated as noise and baked into our overall model and system design. We then leverage the broadband capabilities of the MOE to focus on the regions of greatest interest or variability. Fundamentally, we are selecting as much or little range that gives us valuable information while reducing unnecessary noise in our measurement. We then apply our multivariate calibration to the data. When I refer to multivariate, what I'm referring to is the use of the multiple wavelengths to characterize our system. So let's take a look at a simple system for a moment, like the representative spectral data you see here. This is a fictitious sample, but will help in demonstrating the value of the multivariate analysis. We have two analytes a species 1 and a species 2 in our simple system. If we were to measure our spectra over varying concentrations, we would expect to see a result like the plot on the right. Taking that mixture spectra, we could then build a linear relationship by looking at just two intensities, say 500 nanometers and 700 nanometers. We would want to avoid the roughly 600 nanometers as this point provides no contribution to our concentration relationship. Unfortunately, most systems aren't that simple, and when we add in an uncorrelated interfering species, this problem becomes more challenging. 
The plot you are seeing here is the same representative system shown in the previous slide, but with the addition of this interference. Our system now can no longer be characterized by just two wavelengths. If we're lucky, maybe we'd be able to characterize by three wavelengths, but it could also be hundreds or even thousands. What this translates into is us looking at spectral regions versus a couple wavelengths. Once we have established the regions of interest, we then construct a multivariate model which finds good correlation within that data set. In a simpler context, we are creating a model to translate our raw spectral measurements into a predictive result. You can see here how our model, or regression, is used to perform mathematical operations on our measured spectra. Multivariate optical computing instrumentation goes one step further though and encodes those spectroscopic patterns into the instrumentation. Remember, the MOE is just a filter, but what we have done is to construct a filter which builds in the model you need to achieve the measurement you want. Let's see how these concepts come together by looking at our measured spectra for our oils. You'll see on the left plot our visible spectra, and on the right we have near infrared. For those more familiar with plant-based spectra, you will see where chlorophyll presents itself, especially for the olive oil and CBD. A benefit of focusing on the shortwave infrared is that we can map what we see in this curve back to fundamental things in the chemistry of our sample. Different chemistries are going to give us unique fingerprints that we can interrogate. As part of our multivariate analysis for the oil spectra, we performed a principal component analysis, or PCA, to determine the regions of greatest variance. The PCA plot on the left illustrates how our similar data points will cluster based on which variable is the most valuable. The plot on the right creates our principal component weighting of our signal. Results from the multivariate analysis then become our starting points for designing the optical filter. While we are using the model for filter design, the model also allows us to determine the appropriate optical components in the system to yield the desired measurement characteristics. For instance, what light source is most appropriate, or selecting detectors to give us the greatest sensitivity with the MOE. This phase is also where we determine final packaging for the complete MOE system. Thus far, I've spoken primarily about how we design, spec, and build our systems, but some of our customers already have a predetermined optical system, which could include optical path configurations, particular detectors, etc. So, if you already have a system and would like to look at the potential of adding an MOE into that design, we can also work with you on that. After completing our model and selecting the ideal components for our system, we then model the instrument response of our system. This allows us to design and build a complete system where we account not only for random variations in our measurements, but also systematic variations in the hardware of the instrument. Now that we've established the required components, we can use these parameters to design our multivariate optical element, or MOE. I use the word N MOE and not the MOE because in reality, our design process can yield thousands of MOEs. Our years of industry experience and designing systems allows us to narrow those results to only a couple of prime candidates from which choice can be made. The filter designs are then fabricated at Thor Labs and our well-equipped coatings department where we're not only fabricating, but qualifying the filters to ensure that we're achieving our targeted profile. You can see on the plot shown here the accuracy that we're able to achieve based on our design parameters. Upon receipt of the filter, we assemble our complete application-specific MOE sensor platform. We then perform all of our in-house testing and qualification before shipping to the customer. It is important to remember that when deploying an MOE, our model is fundamentally encoded into the filter. This, coupled with simpler optical configurations, allows us to make real-time or very near real-time predictions when presented with a sample. Essentially, the dispenser becomes a radiometric power meter for the information you are most interested in. No more complicated post-processing, just a simple output of the information you want. So, here we go. Let's grab another sample. This time I will grab Gripseed. Going to our user interface, we'll click measure. You can see that output is correct. 
We'll swap that out. This time we'll grab CBD. This is a hemp-based oil. Back to the user interface, clicking measure. And there you have it, a simple demo for food oil identification sensor using the MOE technology. Now this is important because for routine spectroscopic measurements, MOEs can provide simple, robust sensors that exhibit the same accuracies and specificity as laboratory-grade spectrometer in smaller, lighter, and more powerful packages. MOEs can be deployed for a qualitative application, is a chemical present, or quantitatively, how much of a particular chemical is in my matrix or solution. Bottom line, whether you're in a laboratory, developing a medical device, or developing a real-time, inline, industrial manufacturing sensor, you only get the information you care about. For the purposes of this demo and webinar, we tried to keep things simple. And by that, I mean we wanted you to be able to see and visualize the types of components that can be used to develop an MOE sensing tool. So where do we go from there? As I mentioned earlier, there are many different ways an MOE sensor can be packaged. For example, MOEs have been designed to detect important characteristics of crude oil, such as key gas to oil ratios, in real time, below the ocean floor. As you can imagine, these MOE systems had to, and still do today, endure a tremendous heat and pressure conditions while providing key data to the customer at major oil and services company. In some cases, these sensors can save the company up to a million dollars a day. Here you will see another interesting MOE sensor we developed. This is an example of an inline automotive fuel sensor, which was designed to monitor key components in compressed natural gas to optimize an engine's performance. Before I started working on this project, I had no idea how much variability there was with the efficiency values in fuel and gases. A spectrometer could have done the job, but you just cannot easily stick a delicate spectrometer in a fuel line of a vehicle for several reasons. Physical size, speed of the output, and then of course weight and cost. Here we have a system we developed for one of our industrial customers. This system is quite similar to the demo I just walked you through. However, as you can see, we were able to reduce the footprint, make it wall mountable, and provide a nice touch screen and user display at the request of the customer. This particular system was designed to measure a chemical process in real time and in line. The enclosure could have easily been ruggedized or explosion proof if that had been required by the customer. For 2021, we are in development of a system conceptually similar to this for our catalog. There'll be a small footprint, modular, photometer-like system that can accommodate a variety of light sources, detectors, and filters or MOEs. The goal we set when designing this system was to give our customers the ability to flexibly develop and build a powerful MOE and or traditional optical filter system tailored for a variety of their sensing needs. This is a high priority project and something we look to release as soon as possible. Hopefully you learned about our exciting technology called multivariate optical computing and how a multivariate optical element, also called an MOE, can be leveraged to develop application-specific sensors that can detect or measure chemicals in real time and with the same accuracy as a laboratory-grade spectrometer. I know we reviewed a lot pretty quickly, but keep in mind, the MOE is just a custom broadband encoded optical filter. They can be leveraged in the UV, out to the mid-infrared spectral region, and can be used in both point detection as well as imaging systems to interrogate a wide variety of phases, which includes solids, liquids, gases, slurries, powders, the list goes on. We do all that in real time. We're excited about the MOE technology. We hope you are too. We look forward to hearing from you and are happy to answer your questions.